Peter's denial is probably one of the greatest scenes of the Gospels, not only in terms of literature. You know, some people say, oh, the Gospels are, do not have these great stories, like uh, the judgment of Solomon or the Joseph story and so forth. And I would say, no, there is Peter's death, which is in a way the most beautiful story. Peter is all men there. Peter is all men there. Men cannot resist. Men cannot resist the mimetic contagion. The mimetic contagion. When you're in a crowd, you become literally possessed by the crowd. Possessed by the crowd. The Gospels, what they, one of the things they do from an anthropological viewpoint is to show you that the crowd spirit is all powerful, that only Jesus can conquer. is all powerful after Jesus, that it's a real power on earth, since it can conquer even Peter. Even Peter. Which is uh, uh, pretty uh, disturbing if you regard it as a prophecy, too, of what would happen at the last time, which it may well be, you know, because right now that's what we are seeing. When people tell you that Christianity must be modern and follow the spirit of the time, what do they say? Follow the crowd, follow advertising, follow what else could they say? Follow the crowd. You see, that's why I think we must refrain from following that spirit and listening to these voices, however pious they sound. You see, because Peter's denial is absolutely the amazing thing. Peter, when he hears the crowd, there is one of the Gospels that makes it very clear, that tells us that the servant is young. And she says another thing, which in my view is extremely important. She says, anyway, I recognize you because you have that Galilean accent which is unpopular in Jerusalem. In other words, you're a kind of foreigner. You're not even one of us, you know. You're a stranger. So what does Peter do? He wants to show he's one of them. And the only way you show you're part of a crowd is to join in scapegoating. If I have the same, same enemy you have, I am one of yours. So you really have, you know, in a very subtle way, indications of what the incentives are for Peter, which are universally human. That's why we must not say, oh, Peter is a special case. He, he, he betrays Jesus there because he's a weak individual, really. I don't think he's just the representative of all the apostles since he's the head, you see. So I think it's a scene which is absolutely priceless. There is no sociology, you know, and revelation of what living together does to human beings. You see, how come we all have the ideas of our time? How come we all have the ideas of our time? You know, not so many centuries ago, everybody automatically believed in God. It didn't mean much. Today, automatically, no one believes in God. But it's purely a mob phenomenon. It's purely a mob phenomenon. It's not because there are our full scientific arguments, you know. It's Peter's denial. That's all it is. The Peter's denial is infinitely more powerful to tell you about what society is, you know, than any other text. Then, at the same time, the idea that Peter doesn't know what he's doing is extremely important. In other words, he's denying, not unconsciously, but he's unconscious of what he's really doing. That's why maybe the most beautiful thing is the ending, 
Because in order to show unconscious, we say words like unconscious, they don't mean much. But the Gospels know very well how to represent very directly, very understandably, that unconscious. All they tell you, all they have to tell you, and then the cock was heard. The cock was heard. And it reminds Peter of what he had conveniently forgotten, which was that Jesus had predicted the very thing that has been happening. And here you can see that the prediction of Jesus is not some kind, you know, of, uh, uh, what should I say, of divine inspiration, but it's also his human knowledge. He understands human communities infinitely better than all these guys, and he knows that Peter is going to find himself in a situation of collective pressure, of mob pressure, in which he will deny. So all we have to do is to see the cock crowed, and Peter started to cry. Peter suddenly, it was not the unconscious in the sense of fright, he had put it out of his mind, but the cock reminded him, and there it was. So uh, there is one gospel only, which does it in a different way, which is less picturesque, but which is the same thing, which is the Gospel of Luke that has Jesus meet Peter on his way, you know, because he's in the courtyard, and, and look at Peter. He only has to look at Peter, and Peter understands. It's the same as the car. It's a second conversion for uh, Peter, and it's a conversion very similar to false conversion because what Peter discovered is that exactly the same thing as Paul but Paul hears from the mouth of Christ why do you persecute me in other words what Peter hears from Jesus is you've joined the people who are crucifying even you you know and you've done it in the most natural unconscious way possible without being aware that you are a kind of criminal. You're not in a way, and you are and you are not. Because you just behave like everybody else. Resist the mimetic contagion.